This video will show how to compute the center of mass of a molecule from its XYZ coordinates. All right, so we're familiar with the concept of the total mass of an object. So this is what we would call the zeroth moment of mass. The total mass is just a scalar value. It's a number. So something like uh, 50 kilograms, five grams, uh, 13 atomic mass units, whatever the unit is, it's just a single scalar value. The total mass is just add up the mass of each of the individual elements of the object. In this case, our elements are going to be individual atoms. So things like hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen atoms. Uh, in principle, we should take the mass of specific isotopes of these, like for example, carbon 12 or carbon 13. Uh, what I'm going to be doing in this chapter is just taking the uh, average mass from the periodic table in terms of atomic mass units um, in spectroscopy. That would be a very, very bad thing to do typically, but I am not a spectroscopist, so I am not going to worry about it for now. And I'm just going to note that I am cheating and uh, you can make that note as well. Okay, so our total mass is just the sum of the mass of all of the individual atoms from the periodic table. That would give us our mass in atomic mass units, which is, you know, 1.66054 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. It's like one over Avogadro's number divided by a thousand. But what we're interested here is what we would call the first moment of mass, which is a vector, which is the center of mass. So the center of mass is essentially the point at which um, if you were to hold up an object on a fingertip, it would be perfectly balanced at that point in all directions. So the center of mass, I said we can represent as a vector. So it has an X coordinate, a Y coordinate, and a Z coordinate. It's the point in space about which our object is completely balanced. So all of these elements we could define as one divided by the number of atoms, so n being the number of atoms. So we'd have 1 over n sum i equals 1 to n. I apologize for switching between lowercase and uppercase n's here. Try to be more consistent about that. So we have sum over all the atoms of the mass of the atom times its x coordinate. So each of the elements in the sum here is a mass times a position. And we sum those up and divide by n. And what we get there is going to be the uh, center of mass coordinate. All right? Uh, for y, same thing, except we do it with the y coordinate. And for z, we have the same thing, except we do that with the z coordinate. So I mentioned in our XYZ video, uh, fi in our XYZ file video, that several of the coordinates in XYZ uh, representations are redundant. So we said we have six redundant coordinates because six of them or three of them are translations. You're just moving the molecule through space and three of them are rotations. You're just rotating the molecule around an axis. So using the center of mass, we can actually remove three of those redundant coordinates if we so choose because we could translate our molecule such that the center of mass is going to be the origin of our system so that the center of mass position in x y and z is going to be zero that means we don't have any translational redundancy anymore so then i would have my x i c m would just be the uh or the coordinates for any given atom in this center of mass reference frame would be their original coordinates minus the center of mass coordinates so for every atom, their coordinates would be translated by the negative center of mass coordinates to push them uh, and make that center of mass equal to the origin. All right, so let's take a look again. Uh, once again, we're looking in my uh, GitHub computational chemistry repository. I've got that uh, Jupyter notebook of that open in the scripts geometry analysis subdirectories. We have a program called centerofmass.py. That's here, the same kind of stuff we've been building on this entire chapter, now with some new functions to deal with center of mass. I have print center of mass right there. What else are we going to have here? We have translate coordinates, which I use to translate to the center of mass. Uh, get the center of mass, which we use there. 
Okay, all that stuff. Anything else? And then just some new stuff added to the main block to, to uh, print some of that stuff. Okay, so executing this from an IPython notebook from the top level directory, I just have the notebook subdirectory that this is inside of. And once again, as usual, if I run it without any input arguments, I get the usage. I need to give it an XYZ file to act on. So why don't I go ahead and hit tab geometry, tab XYZ, tab what molecule shall we try? How about benzene? Okay, shift enter to run that. So we got the initial XYZ geometry repeated to us. It found 12 bonds and bond lengths, 18 bond angles, 24 torsion angles, 18 out of plane angles. The center of mass was originally at these coordinates and then it translated the molecule, uh, its XYZ coordinates to that center of mass. So you can notice that these differ from the original coordinates by the values of the center of mass. So you can uh, feel free to follow along or run that on any of the other uh, files in that XYZ directory or any new ones that you make yourself.